In this video, we'll summarize the results that we get for repeated eigenvalues, as well as an example of solving a full problem of this type. So what do we end up getting out of that entire process of generalized eigenvectors and all that fun stuff for these problems? Well, the end result of all of it is we do end up with two linearly independent solutions that we can use to write a general solution. It's a little more complicated to get to than the ones for real and distinct roots, but the idea is the same. Once I get these two solutions, I write them with constants to get a general solution, and then I can do whatever I want from there. So in general, for these problems, assume we're looking at the system x prime equals a times x, where determinant of a minus lambda i factors as lambda minus r squared. We have a double eigenvalue at r. So we know this is going to have at least one eigenvector, and we'll assume here it only has one for the sake of this situation. So we find the eigenvector as a solution to a times v equals lambda v, or the way you generally solve it, a minus lambda i times v equals zero. And then since we only find one of these, we also want to find a generalized eigenvector to pair with it. So you find a generalized eigenvector as a solution to a minus lambda i times w, equals the same vector v that we found in the previous step. Once we have these vectors, we can then write a general solution as x of t is c1 times our first solution, which is v e to the rt, and then c2 times our second solution, which will be v times t e to the rt, and then plus w e to the rt. And note that the C2 applies to both of these terms here, not just one of them. It's the same constant for both of these terms. These two terms are linked, and that that's what will make this actually solve the differential equation. So now for an example of working this out, let's look at this system here. X prime is six minus eight, two minus two times X. So as always, we start by looking for the eigenvalues, which are given by determinant of A minus lambda I equals zero which in this case is six minus lambda minus two minus lambda plus 16. Lambda squared minus six lambda plus two lambda minus 12 plus 16 is lambda squared minus four lambda plus four, which gives a double root at two. And yes, this is the same problem we solved previously, but we'll see it in sort of a complete context as how you would go through these problems normally. We found that double root. Now let's find an eigenvector, at least one. Hopefully you'd find two, but we won't in this case. So let's look for eigenvectors. And so we're subtracting two off the diagonal. So I end up with a matrix that is four minus eight, two minus four, which will reduce to one minus two, zero, zero. Which means an eigenvector here is two and one. Now, since I only get one eigenvector, I know I'm going to need a generalized eigenvector to write the general solution. Let's just do that right now. We already have this equation put together. So I can then look for the generalized eigenvector. So we can take the same matrix we had before, this after we subtracted lambda i, four minus eight, two minus four, and tack on the two one that is the eigenvector, and then solve this out. If we row reduce this, we end up with two minus four, one, zero, zero, zero. It tells me that two w one minus four w2 equals 1. I can choose any w1, w2 I want to satisfy this. To give a contrast to the one we found previously, let's use w2 equaling 1 fourth and w1 equals 0 as our choice here. So my generalized eigenvector is 0 and 1 fourth. Now that I have it, I can write the general solution. And I get x of t equals c1 times my eigenvector, which was 2, 1 e to the 2t, and then plus c2 times the second solution, which is the eigenvector, times t e to the 2t, and then plus my generalized eigenvector, 0, 1 fourth, times e to the 2t. And that would be a general solution for this problem. Now just to relate to the previous example, in the first time we did this, we had this last term here, this one here, being a 1 half 0, e to the 2t, whereas now we have a 0, 1 fourth e to the 2t. I have now realized my mistake from earlier. These should all be negative 1 fourths. Negative 1 fourth here, negative 1 fourth here, negative 1 fourth here. 
because I want this to be positive one here, this value has to be negative one fourth. But what's the difference here? Well, it turns out the difference here is actually a multiple of this first solution. So if I take one half zero and subtract one fourth of the eigenvector to one, I actually get zero and minus one fourth. So what that means is the difference between this solution and what we found earlier is just that I've moved some copies of this into this orange term over here. I still get the same general solution no matter what I pick for the generalized eigenvector, but it's going to look a bit different. And it's gonna be different by some multiple of the original eigenvector because I have this C1 and C2 that if I change the numbers a bit, I can move copies of this into here to change what this vector looks like because these are the same solution. These two are just paired together in a way that shows that it actually solves the problem. That's the setup for these general solutions and how you get them from the eigenvector and generalized eigenvector for a repeated eigenvalue.